Alright, hello everyone, welcome to this video. Today I'm going to be talking about how to play against the London system with the black pieces. And so, the line that I'm going to show you today occurs after d4, knight f6, bishop f4, d5, e3, e6, bishop d6, here. And I just want to note before we get into things that this might not necessarily work for every single player. For a lot of people who, for example, play like d5 here, this will work. For people who play like the Nimzo Indian, this will also work. However, for people who play like the King's Indian defense, this probably won't work so well because against knight f3, if you play g6 here, bishop f4, you're not going to be able to go for this d5 and e6 up here since you've already committed to playing g6. But I imagine for most people here, this setup will work perfectly fine. Since a lot of people here will play stuff like d5 and play a queen's gamut declined or Slav defense, because after knight of 3 knight of 6 bishop f4, you can still play this up for e6 and bishop d6. And also after knight of 3 knight of 6 if your opponent still goes c4, you can now play whatever your defense was against c4 normally in this position. So with that out of the way, however, let's start off from this position. This is kind of where everything starts when you play bishop d6. And here we get this sort of interesting situation where there's some kind of tension between the bishops here. And there's a bit of an underlying question. Does one side take the other side's bishop? Do we keep tension? Does white play knight e5? All of those things are possible here. The most popular approach, however, is bishop g3 here, and that's why I'm going to start off covering. I'm going to just show the basic setup that black goes with, which is that we castle first. White will maybe play something like knight e2 or bishop d3. The order can be mixed around a bit. Uh, b6, bishop d3. Uh, and here what we're going to do is we play c5 or bishop a6. And it doesn't really matter the order, we can go c5 first and then bishop a6, or we can play bishop a6 immediately here. Just notice so that if they play instead of like bishop d3, they play c3 here. Don't play bishop a6 here before they've developed the bishop, because if we play a move like bishop a6 here, they can take in one go, instead of if we say for example play c5, bishop d3, and then they take here, they have to spend two tempo doing that, so we'd rather make them some of that extra tempi, in order to make the exchange of bishops. It just makes sense, right? We just gain extra tempo. So anyways, after bishop d3, c5, or bishop a6, bishop c3, and now bishop a6, we get this position, which is what we're really aiming for. And here, white will most of the time just take here on a6, which is probably what they should do as well. And here we recapture back to the knight, and this is kind of the main position that we're really aiming for against the London. With exchange of the light squared bishops, which is what we'd consider white squared bishop in this pawn structure, given that all of the central pawns are on dark squares, so because of that, the light squared bishop is naturally kind of a good complement to the pawns being on dark squares, but since we trade it off, and also our light squared bishop is what we consider our bad one, this is very good for us. And basically, we have a very simple plan. We're going to take our knight on a6, but we're actually going to reroute it back to the c6 square here by playing knight b8 to c6 and then we're going to try to play queen 7 and play e5 here very simple plan but it's very difficult for black to really stop us from doing it the only way they can really stop us from doing that is by going for this plan with knight e5 here after queen e2 knight b8 or even if they don't play like queen e2 and kick our knight away we're going to play like say castles knight b8 anyway just simply because the knight isn't doing much yet, we want to bring it to the c6 square, so it's very important. But, anyhow, this, a lot of this stuff can transpose to each other for various different move orders. Won't go too much into that, just want to kind of flush out the main important ideas. So knight b8 here, knight e5, queen 7 And here, a very common setup that white will go for is with f4 here. Kind of consolidating the knight here on e5, and this looks very kind of scary at first. It looks like white has this very... Kind of annoying knight here clamping down on this e5 square, but we can actually play around with it, which is a very nice maneuver. And if you remember one thing from this video, apart from the bishop a6 move, it should be this. This is a very nice maneuver, which I remember learning maybe back in 2017 for the first time. Very important move in this whole line, and without it, you're going to have a bit of a struggle. But if you know this, a lot of your opponents aren't going to know it, and you're just simply going to get a very good position with it. And even if they do know it exists, it's very difficult to stop. So what is it? Well, knight six here, that's not a secret. But it's after castles, knight e7. This is kind of the first move in the sequence of moves where we're kind of planning to play knight f5 here, 
simply just moving the knight to a bit more of an axe square, putting pressure on this bishop a bit, that's not the whole point here. After rook a e1, bringing the rook to a more active square, the idea is here is that we can play knight f5. And after bishop f2, say moving the bishop, preparing to play g4, it looks like our knight just came to f5 for no reason. But here, if you want to try and pause the video and find the whole idea behind this sequence that we just played with knight e7 to knight f5, I'd highly suggest you do so. But with that being said, the move here in this position is bishop e7. And now, it's like, what, what was the point of that? It's like, doesn't this just move the bishop to one passive square? Well, it wasn't really doing much on d6 to begin with, it was just kind of staring at that knight. We never really wanted to take that knight, because then if we did, they'd just recap back to the f pawn and force our knight to move to a square, which it really doesn't want to move. But now if they play g4, notice how before our knight would have had to go back to like the e7 square. But now we have the d6 square open for us. If they continue pushing the g pawn with g5, we can play knight f e4. If they take the knight, then instead of having to recapture back to the pawn, which might not be that bad to be honest, we can instead recapture back with the knight here. And the e4 square is just a very nice square for our knight to be seen on, very difficult for them to remove the knight for us. And also we have this situation where, notice how since we traded off the light square bishop earlier of white, they're stuck with this dark square bishop which is kind of their bad bishop. And look at all their pawns, they're all on dark squares here, strategically speaking, Black just has a very nice position, it's not so easy for white to use this dark square bishop. We can play on the queen side with something like eventually like b5, b4, maybe we'll play c4 as well. Maybe we could also get counterplay on the king side for move like f6. In general, all the cards are in black's hands here, and white doesn't really have any real attack on the king side, even if these pawns do look a bit scary superficially. Also, another idea instead of say playing rook a1 here which is a bit slow is to play bishop h4 here pressuring this knight here on this f6 square and if we continue with our plan of knight f5 this probably isn't so great because after something like takes here it forces us to create double pawns in front of our king maybe after something like knight g4 here putting a bit of pressure here it's honestly not that pleasant and i think we should probably avoid this instead what we can do is play this move knight e8 and basically we're just preparing to play this move f6 next, kicking away this knight, very typical idea in this whole line. Even though once again this knight may have looked quite scary on e5, honestly once we remove this knight from f6 and just play, prepare to play f6, it's like they can't really do much and it's kind of was all just for show, there wasn't any real softness behind it, and all of a sudden black kind of just gets a very nice position. Eventually after this knight moves back, we could try and prepare e5 in the future, or we could play more on the queen side with once again moves like b5 and b4 and c4 and just kind of play there. So if you know this line, you are like 90% of the way there in terms of what you need to know. However, sometimes what your opponents will do is instead of playing this cell with bishop d3 here, they'll play knight e5 here. And this makes things a little bit more complicated for us because after c5, c3, they haven't yet developed their bishop once again. It's not so easy for us to play bishop a6 because once again, as I mentioned, we don't want to allow white to take here on a6 in one go. So instead what we're going to do here is we're going to change our strategy slightly, but we still have that kind of same idea that I showed before that was very kind of key to our whole setup working. So what we're going to do here is after c5, c3, or we're going to play bishop b7, or instead in this position 95, bishop b7 immediately, it should more or less be the same thing, bishop d3, c5, c3. Knight c6. And here what white will pretty much always do is they'll play f4, kind of in the same fashion we saw earlier. The one kind of key difference being of course that uh, we haven't been able to trade off the light squared bishops here, so this is kind of the one thing white has going in their favour, but as we're still going to see anyways, it's not a big deal, black is still doing perfectly fine. So once again, what do we play here? If you want to try and pause the video and figure that out, well, here's your opportunity. We play knight e7 though. And basically the same maneuver as earlier, bring the knight to f5, play bishop e7, play knight e6, and we're good to go. It's very difficult for black to actually do anything against this. And it's not only this idea actually, but after castles, uh, we don't even have to play knight f5, bishop e7, knight e6. We could even consider playing a move like knight e4 immediately, taking control of this e4 square. But for simplicity's sake, you could also just play this cell with knight f5, bishop f2, bishop e7, and once again, play knight d6 and put the knight in e4, nothing black can really do to stop us from playing that. Also, just knowing that if white ever tries to take here on f5 and give us double pawns like this, it's not a big deal actually, because 
if they have a try targeting the spawn, for example, we just play G6, no big deal. Then we can simply just put our kind of EFO, target this E3 pawn, move the knight somewhere like maybe like D7, and then just play F6, kicking this knight away. And they can't really do anything to stop us from kicking that knight off from the E5 square. And once we do that, we're just going to have the very nice semi open E file for our rook. They're not going to have any clear weaknesses to target. And all in all, we're doing pretty good. A slightly more common move though, a bit earlier, in of castles, might be Queen F3. Simply stopping 94, as I was showing earlier. But once again, we know the plan that we go for in the silver position. Knight F5, Bishop F2, preparing to play G4 to kick our knight away. But once again, we're just in the nick of time here by playing Bishop E7, G4, Knight D6. And if they continue pushing our knight away, what do we do? We will we'll just put it on E4. And once again, very nice position for us. If they ever play something like takes, we take back the pawn here. And it's very nice to notice how in this sort of position here, our knight squared bishop just has so much potential after some white like takes. For example, they take back the e pawn, we can play e3 here, and now we create a discovered attack on this rook here, and so we're just going to be winning the queen rook here, or a piece, I guess. But if they don't play that and they play something like takes here, we could conceal putting our bishop on the square like a6 here, taking control of this diagonal, stopping them from casting, or we could do something like rook c8, trying to bring our rook to c2. It's very difficult for white to actually do anything to counter our plan here because notice how in giving up their knight square bishop they gave up a lot of control over important squares like c2 and this diagonal here and because of that their position is really suffering. Also one last note, if white in this position does not play bishop g3 and they instead take here, we can just simply take here on d6 and in general we could go for that plan of b6 and bishop a6 I showed earlier after like castling. Or we could even just simply go for something like c5, breaking back in the center like that. There's nothing really to be concerned about here. Alright, so thank you for sticking around to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I found this to always be a very simple and effective system against the London, which um, it's like system against the London system, I guess. But yeah, it's always you wouldn't be very good results. And uh, I hope that you two can start winning games against the London, no one will find it so annoying. Uh, which it, I guess, always will be. But anyways, I hope if you liked the video and like the video, uh, subscribe to the channel for more content like this, and also leave any comments down below if there's any specific questions you had about this opening. Anyways, until next time, I will see you.